Hey everybody, it's Angel from Halo Inspirations. We give you inspirations to help you spread beauty and joy through your quilting journey. Today is Wednesday and gosh darn, I have missed y'all last week. I'm back in the house, I'm ready to roll and I'm so glad to be here, especially as today is July 29th, 2020. And that means this is the beginning of a summer quilting tale. So let me take you just for a second. We're gonna go there for just a second. You know, when you read books, right? Or, or in today's world, you might be listening to books. You can find adventure. You can find romance. You can find mystery. Maybe you're reading a book on how to do something, or maybe you even have a book that is just chock full of inspiration. Yeah. Well, you can find that too inside of a bookshelf quilt. I'm so super excited about this. So Vicki Holloway of My Creative Corner 3 and myself are going to guide you fabric to finish on your very own bookshelf quilt. Now you might be asking, what's a bookshelf quilt? Some people don't realize what exactly a bookshelf quilt is. So I'm gonna throw a couple of pictures up here. This is two um, bookshelf quilts that Vicki Holloway has done. And it, it is what it looks like, right? It's a quilt that looks like a bookshelf. And the thing that is so amazing about this is that it's all up to your imagination. Okay. There are no rules. There's a formula, but there are no rules. This is going to allow you to be very creative, very creative and design your own bookshelf quilt. So excited, like I said. So the next four weeks, we're going to take you through this sew along. And I will tell you that we both have private groups. Vicki has one, My Creative Corner, three on Facebook. And I, of course, have the Creative Kingdom. Both of these are private groups. And we're engaging with our members who I have to tell you, I think we have the best out there. I mean, I'm not just saying that I'm, I'm dead serious. They are wonderful individuals. So I encourage you to come along and, and share the process with others. And I'll put the links down below. Now I want to remind you they're both private groups. So you'll have to answer the questions to get into these groups because we take that security measure, that safety measure to really keep our members in a safe place. Okay. That's one of the things that we both do. So moving on, I started out this video sitting down because I wanted just to chit chat a little bit. Okay. This type of quilt is all, like I said, about your imagination. Okay. But you might, you know, you, you kind of need a little bit of guidance on what kind of things you might want or need, right? First and foremost is fabric. So as you saw, and I'll put them up here again, Vicki has done two minimalist type of bookshelf quilt. Minimalist meaning you just have books on a shelf, okay, inside a book case, right? And um, her backgrounds on both of them are black. The one that she's creating now is done in white. I am making one with a back background. Now Vicki has encouraged, depending on the size of quilt that you want to do, you might want two to three yards to make sure you're covered for that background of your shelves. Okay. So you want to think about that. The other side of fabric is your scraps. All of these are parts of my scraps. Okay. And you can even use the ugly fabric that you have sitting there wondering what in the world you're ever going to do with it. This is the place where it can definitely make that debut. Okay. So that's the fabric that you're going to need to get this done. Now, as far as designing, I will tell you what I did was I took a piece of paper and a pen and I old school just drew out a square, decided that I wanted three shelves. I am doing mine 14 inches tall, finished. Vicki's doing somewhere between 12 and 14. And I'm going, I'm thinking at this point, things can change as you go because this is, this is part of that creative process, but I'm thinking I'm going to do mine at 36 inches long. Now I know that, um, my quilt will end up being bigger 
uh, Vicki has done two already like that. So she decided she wanted to do something a little smaller. You can do a wall hanging, you can do a placemat type thing, you can do a throw, you can do a twin. Yeah, it's all up to your imagination. So I just sketched it out, okay? Now if you were just doing the minimalist type where you just got the books on the shelves, it is perfect, it is so super cool. But some people really enjoy doing a little bit of personalization. Like, um, and we'll talk more about it uh, in next week, but you might want to have plants. Some people I've seen have their like favorite, their dog or their cat, their pets, um, maybe a bird. Some people have put plants or coffee mugs, um, you know, picture frames they put on their shelves with the actual photo of whatever it is that they have, their family or a person that means something to them and they printed it on fabric and put it on their book. So there's so much creativity that goes into this. And I am not doing a minimalist. I am going to add a little bit of personalization. So in my sketch, I put where I think I want them. Okay. It's just, it's just a seriously, just scratch, scratch, get her done. Okay. From there, we need to start building those shelves. Okay. That's this video. I'm going to start to show you how to make those shelves and how to get those books going. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. And the first part of doing that, if you're working with yardage like I am for my background, I'm going to show you how to square it. So let's go ahead and get this started. Okay, I wanted to do a quick review on squaring fabric. I know I've done a video on this before, so I'll put a link above uh, so you can watch that if you prefer. This is just a quick review. The reason I wanted to talk about this is if you're like me making this quilt, you're going to be cutting yardage, or, yes, you'll be cutting yardage for your background strips. So it's very important to, to square your fabric first. So after you've prepped your fabric, the first step in squaring is how you're gonna fold it. Now, if it's not folded straight, what'll happen is you'll cut your, your uh, strips and they'll have a bend. Okay, a nice beautiful bend that is not beautiful for you unless you're doing something wonky. Um, you want those strips just as straight as an arrow. So this is the first step is how you're going to fold this fabric. Now it's much easier if you fold this fabric it, with like a yard or less because you, you know, you can only hold so far, correct? And this isn't the color I'm using. I'm actually using black, but I wanted to demonstrate something that you could probably see what I'm talking about. So the fold is super important. So you're going to fold it salvages to salvages. Now this is a boutique, so the salvages are a little different, but I do know that these are my salvages. So it's one time fold, salvage to salvage. And then I put my fingers where my thumb's on one side and the, the one of the sides of the fabric are in between my two fingers, okay? So you're gonna wanna do, hold it just like so. Now, if you are working with more than a yard, sometimes I'll cut it down to a yard to make this more manageable. And sometimes I get my buddy to help me hold it out and make sure that this is straight. So. Fold it salvage to salvage. And then what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna wiggle your fingers, wiggle, 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 wiggle your fingers until it looks straight. Now I will tell you, on this end, it looks pretty darn good to me, okay? Now why would you do this whenever you get your fabric from the shop? A lot of times they don't cut it straight. So this is going to allow to make sure that it is straight. Now, this, like I said, looks pretty darn good to me. Uh, from this side. However, and I'm giving it a little shake to shake things out. What I want to show you is what it would look like if it wasn't right. What, what it is that we're trying to eliminate happening. And I'm going to, hopefully you can see this. Let's see. Whoops. It's lots of fun here trying to maneuver this to show you. But what'll happen is you'll get a wrinkle that starts at the bottom where the fold is, okay? 
and it will go up in an angle. Let's see, how's that? Because I see one on this side. Can you see it on your side? Yes, there it is. So I will point this out on the video so you can actually see it, but it starts at the bottom and it goes up to this hand, okay? That is what you're trying to eliminate. So you would wiggle and straighten it out to try to get rid of all of those wrinkles per se and get it nice and straight from the fold. Once you have that, then it's okay to place it down onto your cutting mat, okay? So again, fold it selvage to selvage, put those in between your little, your fingers and your thumb and just give it, oh, see, there's a big one. Just give it a great big wiggle wiggle through your fingers, shaking it out at times and try to eliminate that fold that you might see from the bottom to the top, okay? All right, I'm gonna pull you back out and I'm gonna talk about the strip sizes or the formula to helping you get this done more efficiently. So I'll see you in a second. Okay, I wanted to pull you out for just a second here. We're gonna go back to the cutting mat as soon as we're done. However, what we're basically doing, now there are many, many methods that you can do, just like everything else in quilting, that you can do to make a bookshelf quilt. But this is the method that Vicki and I are doing. And basically we're going to be putting together strips. That's what is, it's hard to see right now and these aren't in, where they're going to be necessarily. I have a lot more to cut, but that's basically what these are, are strips, plain and simple. They're strips. So in order to make this efficient, some people would say you'd need to know the rules, but if you're anything like I am, I like to break rules, right? <laughs> so this is the formula because how wide would you cut your strips? So this is, the black is my background fabric and then I've got my scraps that are attached. Well, Vicki and I both are cutting uh, different strips of different sizes. They're one and three quarters, two inches, two and a half inches, and three inches. And Vicki has said time and time again, anything less than an inch and three quarters seems to be too small. Anything bigger than three inches really gets to be too big, right? So that just seems to be the happy medium. So what you'll wanna do is start cutting your fabric, your yardage, your background, if you're using yardage, but your background fabric to begin with in those sizes. So that's the formula to make this a little more efficient. So I'm gonna take you back to the cutting board. I'm gonna finish up squaring my black material. So you're actually gonna see me do that. Uh, and then, and I've already done the folding, you know, and I've done the wiggle wiggle. So I'm gonna finish up the squaring and then I'm gonna give you some tips on how, uh, more tips on how to keep these strips straight. So I'll see you at the cutting mat in just a bit. Okay, so I wanted to explain the second part of squaring off your fabric. Now, what you'll notice is I have two rulers. Now I've done some close-up pictures. The first one, if you look, you'll see that this edge here is not straight. Must have been a bad cutting day for me because uh, this is whew, a little bit off, but that's the first one. So I do know that I need to square this edge. Now we know that because of the wiggle and the shaking out, we know that this fold down here is square. We know it's straight. Now I need to make this line square with this one, just like you have on a square. So the second picture is these two things together. Now what I have done, I am right-handed. I could take this ruler over here line it up along this edge down here and cut off very minimal on this edge, but I'd have to flip the fabric to cut off any extra, you know, my strips that I'd want to cut. So instead of flipping it, 
this is the method that I use. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this large ruler and you're going to line it up along this bottom edge and you're going to take another ruler and this is a six and a half by 24 and a half creative grids. So you can find that in the shop if you don't have one. It does go all the way across a folded um, your yardage. If you fold selvage to selvage, this will go all the way across. It's one of the reasons I absolutely love, love, love this ruler. Now, one of the other things, because I've actually lined this fold up on the bottom line of my fabric, I'm just taking a peek to see if in fact this looks straight and it does. So once I have that, <clears throat> now you're also probably noticing I have a dumbbell. I do, my strength isn't what it used to be. So I use it to help me hold down my rulers. And I'm simply going to pull this apart, pull this away. And I'm gonna take my rotary cutter. And normally I pinky this, but because I'm running off the edge here, there's a little bit of a slant. So I'm just gonna hold it down and very simply cut this fabric, okay? Now before I pull it, I wanna make sure, yep, I didn't get it all the way cut through. No, nope, goodness, I'm having a heck of a day. All right. And I just wanna make sure, I think I need to change that blade still, that I'm going all the way through the fabric before I move my ruler, okay? Very good. So now I'm ready to cut some strips. And I know I'm gonna move my cutting mat here because I had it laying a little bit off my table. All right. Now, there we go. We are ready to cut strips. And what I'm going to do at this point, now remember I told you the strips that we cut are one and three quarter, two inch, two and a half, and three inch. When you add all those together, you get nine and a quarter. So I'm actually gonna line up my ruler at nine and a quarter. And here's why. Let's say I was gonna cut a bunch of two and a half inch strips. So I just lined up my ruler and put it on the two and a half and just kept cutting two and a half inch strips. Just move the ruler, do a cut, move the ruler, do a cut. I don't know why this happens, but it does. And if you do that, after four or five cuts, maybe even less, maybe a little more, so it's a give or take, you'll have to re-square this yardage because they'll, be, they'll start to be a little bit of a bend. And like I said, I don't know why that happens. I've asked a million people, nobody can tell me. I'm thinking just from cutting and shifting and moving and shift happens, I don't know though. So to prevent minimal re-squaring, I cut chunks. So if you're gonna cut five two inch strips, I'd cut 10 inches first. Well, I'm going to go ahead and cut one of each of the sizes that we need. So I'm doing one and three quarters, two inch, two and a half, three inch, which is nine and a quarter. So I'm going to line this up at nine and a quarter. And if you wanted to give yourself some wiggle room, you could do nine and a half. Okay. However, I don't want to waste any more fabric. I don't want more scraps than I need. So I'm going to line this up. So what I have done is I'm lining this quarter inch mark because my, on my ruler it's dotted. So this, this line right here, I'm making sure that it's along this dotted line. Now I cut where the lines are on the fabric 
not off the fabric. So I'm going to line this up on nine and a quarter. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to grab my little ruler because if you notice this big ruler doesn't go all the way up so I'm just going to take another ruler line it up on top I'm going to set this down and I'll have to uh, make adjustments when it gets up there but that's a right there. So I've got nine and a quarter and I'm simply going to cut this one large strip before I make that move. Oh, beautiful. I'm gonna take this off. Okay. Making sure it's all straight. Very good. And I'm just going to slide this away. Now, at this point, that's the only cut to yardage that I've made. And we've got a nice, still, straight, square line. Probably better than I did the first one. So the next thing we're going to do is now we're going to cut our strips. Okay this a little bit out of the way and if you wanted to you could do another nine and a quarter off of here and cut you know be able to cut more strips but now I'm going to start cutting those strips from this fabric okay and I'm gonna start with a three inch looking good looking good Three inch, I just double checked. Remember, measure twice, cut once, right? Yep, it pulled off. Now I'm gonna do a two and a half. Okay. Last but not least, I'm going to do a two. All right. Making sure that I'm on the fabric. My line is, there's my two inch. And the last one should read one and three quarter. And it does. So. Now we have all of our strips for our background, different size strips. Now, another thing that I like to do when I have these strips, and normally I'll cut more than this because it would go a lot faster, but for demo purposes, I'm just gonna show you. I basically line them up one a little bit on top of each other, okay? And I'm going to cut, grab my bigger ruler here. I'm going to cut, I want my bookshelves to be 14 inches, okay? Now I'm gonna leave off the selvage, so I'm actually, actually, I'm gonna do 14 and a half because that's my half inch seam allowance. But I'm actually gonna leave a little more because I've got that um, selvage that I need to cut off. You could do that first to give yourself a nice edge but I'm basically just using the bottom strip edge here and I'm just going to simply cut and I'll do that. You're not going to be, you're going to be left with something less than 14 and a half. However, that's okay because when we add our colored part of our strip, it'll be okay because it'll go still to the 14 and a half. So that's how I cut my fabric to minimize any kind of um, waviness and to keep that honest and another thing when you open up these strips if you want to know if you cut straight 
one of the things you can look at is where this fold is. If there's a, if there's a, uh, any kind of V shape or mountain, you know, it goes like this or like this, that tells you that you did not cut your fabric square. Okay. So I wanted to give you a heads up on that. And I'm going to get off camera and cut some more strips and then I will come back to you in just a little bit and we'll talk about the next steps. Okay, so after you've cut your background fabric into your different strips, then you want to start taking those scraps. And yes, you can use the worst scraps ever, the ugliest fabric you have. This is definitely the place where they're going to make a debut. However, when you do it, you want to start cutting them into the size of the strip. So I've got my one and three quarter pile here, my two inch here, two and a half and three. And the next step that you're going to want to do is put them basically right sides together and sew your quarter inch seam. Then you're going to want to take it to the pressing mat. Now, one of the questions always, which way do I press my seams. Well, in this situation, because things will be different sizes, your seams aren't going to have to worry about lining up. So if you've got a dark fabric for your background, you can totally feel free to press to the dark side. If you've got a light, light fabric, like you're using a white for your background, you can definitely press it towards the light side. I mean, I'm sorry, the dark side, which would be your books, right? <clears throat> so because they're different sizes and you don't have to worry about from strip to strip how they're going to uh, measure up with each other, you don't have to worry about nesting, you can press them in any direction you like. Now one thing I will also mention, because this is going to have a lot of seams, you may in fact want to press your seams open instead okay because that'll help eliminate some of the bulk totally up to you but I wanted to give you a heads up so then you take all your background strips go ahead and sew your books to the end of one of the strips and get them pressed and put them on your design board or your table which is where I'm going to meet you next okay so I have sewn a bunch of strips together <laughs> and I attached my books right and I just started slapping stuff up here this isn't exactly the order I'm planning on keeping it I will say that I'm doing about a 36 inch bookshelf okay 14 inches height 36 across so this is about 36 without seams Okay, but I wanted to show you, you don't need a design board. You could do this on your dining room table. You could do it on the floor if you like. You could do it on your cutting table if it's big enough, depending on the size that you're looking at making your shelves. But at this point, you know, you can swip and swap things around. Okay, and play with it to see where it is that you actually would like these strips to go very easily. You just move them around, okay? And I still don't like that one, but the idea is once you think you have figured out where you want your strips, you can begin to sew them together. So let's just say I'm going to go ahead and sew three of uh, three, these three together. I like where they're at. I like them together, whether or not they'll stay at the front. I'm not sure, but at this point I would work with about three at a time to do this. Okay. Cause they're pretty long seams right? Depending on how big you really want your quilt or your shelves. So I would do about three at a time. Okay. So 
one of the most important things I wanted to talk about, even if you do three, four, five, ten at a time, okay? If you just sew strips together, long strips, so if I just sewed all of these together and I just went down the row and I started here and I sewn up, I started here and I sewed up, et cetera, et cetera. If you start at the bottom every time, eventually what's going to happen is you'll get a beautiful wonky bend. I don't know why. I think it has something to do with the way that the um, sewing machine stitches. So to prevent that, I'm going to sew this block to the blue block, okay, to this block. I'm going to start at the bottom and I'm going to work myself up. Then going on the opposite, when I add this block to these, I'm going to start at the top and sew down. So I'm going to constantly alternate which direction or which side I start, either the top or the bottom. I'm just going to constantly shift it so that it will constantly bring it back and forth and not have that one direction bend. Okay. Now, a couple of more things here. If you'll notice mine, remember I cut 14 and a half. Well, to be honest with you, I don't know what I was cutting at the beginning. I think it was 17 or something crazy, but they are all different up here and they have a lot left over. Okay. So I'm going to pull these three down that I know I want to sew together and I'm going to take a ruler and I'm going to cut them each. Let's see, how would I want to do this? <laughs> I'm going to cut them each at 14 and a half, which actually looks like, let's see here, all the way down here. Okay, so I'm going to Put these on my cutting table and I'm going to cut them each to 14 and a half. Why 14 and a half? Because I want 14 inch shelves and that gives me a half inch seam allowance on the top and the bottom. Okay. And then I'll sew them all together. But I want to show you too, when doing that, look how much I'm cutting off up here, right? I might be able to use those strips to connect some of these taller books. And you want to talk about this short little guy right here? I mean, I'm going to have a lot. I keep messing with my microphone. I'm sorry if it makes any noise, but I'm going to have all of that left over too. And you can even put some of these together if they're the same size strip. Okay. But that way I'm utilizing the most out of this. Now, another thing that make that you want to do if when you're cutting to the size of your shelf, I have a blank one here. Okay. I think it's two inches, but instead of putting a book in, I might want to put a couple of blank spots. Okay. To allow, you know, how you put books on a bookshelf, right? Sometimes there's a little gap might be at the end, might be somewhere in the middle. It might be sitting next to another thing that you want to put in there. But this will allow you to put in some blank, some blank spots. Okay. So that's the other reason I did that. Okay. Just to give you a heads up, cause I'm really trying to use these, uh, the fabric most efficiently. Cause I don't know about you, but I love to use it efficiently. That way I have more money to buy more fabric. <laughs> now, one other thing I wanted to mention is if you take a gander, oh, here it is. I have a, a white strip, a white book, okay, with a couple of red bands. So this is another idea that we can do, all right? And I'm going to show you how to do that in, after this. And um, that way, you, if you want to add any uh, bands, you can do that now. Then the other thing that I wanted to talk about after you sew your three strips together, I don't, it doesn't even matter how many strips you sew together. I highly encourage you to square as you go. Okay. Why? Because if you are off just a little, it can create havoc in the big scheme of things. So if you square three, sew three more, square those three, add those two together, 
everything should be working out well, okay? Just square as you go. And I'm gonna show you too today how I square three of those, okay? And then that, I promise you, that'll be the end of the video. <laughs> However, I'm going to right now take these off, cut them to 14 and a half inches. I'm going to sew them together, okay? Get them pressed. And before I square them, I promise you I'll bring you back into my cutting table. And I will also show you how to do bands on your books, okay? So I'll see you guys in just a second. Okay, this is the book that I decided that I would put a couple of bands on. You could do one, you could do two, you could do three. You know, books, they all have these interesting bands on them that tell you various information. But I'm gonna do two. So I know that this book or this strip is two and a half inches and it's better, or I should say easier to do this before you add the background to it. So I have a two and a half inch strip. So what I have done is I've picked a color that I'd like to make the bands that I thought would be complementary, and I cut another two and a half inch strip. Now I want the bands to be about an inch. That was my preference. I wanted them an inch thick. So I cut an inch and a half off of this strip two times. And the inch and a half, so I have a, ha a quarter inch for one side and a quarter inch for the other, and it will leave me with an inch band. The second thing I like to do, or the next part, is I like to lay them out and figure out exactly where I think I would like to place them, okay? Now, I have found through um, various uh, experimenting that it is best if by visual if you have two bands that they're equal distance from the top and the bottom. So once I think I figured out where I'd like it I simply put it on the my ruler right next to it and it looks about two inches and I think two inches would look good. So what I'm going to actually do is cut two inches from either side, okay? Very simply, one, Got to make sure that it's straight so that your bands are straight. Two. So I have cut two inches off of either side. Whoop, not all the way through. There's like a thread hanging on, guys. It's one of those days. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one and a half and I'm first going to sew right sides together on either side. And then I'm actually gonna press towards the dark side. So I'm gonna get that done and I'll be right back. Okay, so they're both sewn on and pressed to the dark side. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to reattach right sides together. It might help if I put the right sides together. And I'm just simply going to add these sides back on sewing that quarter inch seam. After pressing and after the magic of video, voila, I have my book with two strips. Now I can go ahead and add on my background of my bookshelf and hang it on the design wall. Okay. <clears throat> Last part for today. So I noticed when I was sewing I don't know how well you can see it up there, but because there's a little piece uh, covering it, but I actually cut this strip a little crooked at the top here, which was a lot of fun when I was sewing. However, and so because of that, I'm actually going to square each piece. So I'm going to sew two together, I'm going to square it, and then I'm going to sew on the third. So what you want to do 
is you definitely want to line up seams, okay? You want to make sure you're at 14 and a half. And you want to make sure that this seam is good or that edge because we know it's straight. All right. You want to make sure it's straight on the bottom. And then you want to make sure that your inside seams look straight. And actually everything looks really good minus that little paw right here. I can see it now. Now notice I have just a slight edge. So when I'm squaring, I'm gonna make sure one last time everything looks straight. I'm just gonna cut this itty bitty piece off. It is not gonna make any difference for this type of quilt. So yeah, that is exactly how I'm gonna do that. Now, like I said, I'll do another two pieces together. I'll sew them, I'll square it, and I'll add my third. I'll add two, three pieces together, and I will continue to do that until I reach the right size block. Of 36 inches. So I will see you guys back at the design wall in just a bit. Okay, so there is the beautiful three blocks that are sewn together and the wonderful strip that we did with the bands. I actually really like this one. I think I like it better than this one. It doesn't even matter. <laughs> just as a recap, once you figure out what size your quilt is and how long your shelves are going to be and maybe how many shelves you're going to have you definitely want to decide also how big those shelves are going to be at that point if you're using any yardage square up your yardage and start cutting the strip sizes again one and three quarter two inch two and a half and three inch are what vicky and i are doing so cut your strips, okay? Then get your scraps and make them the same sizes as your strips. Start piecing them together. Start laying them out to figure out exactly maybe how you might like them. Once you do that, you can sew some of them together once you figure out where they wanna be. Now again, I am going to sew two together and square it add a third and square it. Then I'm going to sew three more together and possibly add those together. It's th that's the beautiful thing about this quilt is you get to play with things and see how you're gonna like, whether or not you're gonna like the positioning that you have chosen and you can rearrange. But once these are sewn together, they're done. That's a done deal, right? Now, again, when you do sew on one, sew from the bottom up, from the next one, sew from the top to the bottom. That'll keep things straight and not go a little bit of shift on you, okay? That allows it to go back and forth in your stitching to keep it more straight, okay? This quilt has no rules. This is all about you and what you want to create. A spark of creativity, a spark of fun. Enjoy this process. Again, there are no rules, just a formula to keep it a little bit more efficient, right? <laughs> but there are no rules. Now, I will say if in fact you want to do any personalization and you're thinking part of that will be embroidering or putting you know, any kind of label with embroidery, it might be best to do that at this point. No matter if you're doing it by hand or if you're doing it by machine, I think working with smaller items would be easier to manage opposed to waiting till it's a big quilt and then you gotta fuss with all the quilt around it, right? So if in fact you're gonna do personalization with embroidery, which is awesome by the way, go ahead and probably do that within this phase, okay? Now, speaking of personalization, colors can be very much 
personal thing. I'm doing mine in black and I am doing the strips, right? Vicki is doing hers in white, which I think is so cool. We did not talk about this, what colors we were gonna use prior. I just wanted to use black. She has already done black, so she wanted to use white. I'm gonna throw a picture and just show you part of her process, okay? And as we go along in the next few weeks, I will continue to share her pictures that she shares with me and in these videos, because I want you to see that there are some similarities and then there are some differences. And the first one you can definitely see in that picture that she's doing the strips, okay? And she's putting them on her design board, but hers are in white, okay? So I thought that was really a neat thing and I wanted to be able to share that with you inside this video. Another thing before I keep wrapping this up here, I want you to notice this one little piece that is a little bit longer than the other ones around, right? Well, that's because I really don't want, I thought I did, but I really don't want this strip that long. I don't know exactly where it's gonna go, so I haven't done anything with it yet. I just know I'm going to cut it at some point. So when I figure out where it's gonna go, I'm gonna just put a little mark with my marking pen and I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna chop it. I cannot stand not starting on a straight line <laughs> and this if i were to sew it to here that ain't straight i don't even want to fuss with that so i will put a little mark and i'll cut it off there okay but like i said i just haven't done it yet and um so i don't know where it's going to go so i don't know how much i'm going to need to cut off uh and and that could go for any one of these um strips you can definitely play with the height uh, well, as long as they're not like this big, right? <laughs> so, you know, this, allow yourself to be creative and totally 100% have fun with this. Okay, so I also wanted to mention to you as I wrap this up, next week will be a little bit more on personalization. I'm actually gonna do some foundation paper piecing I know I've done a video on it before, but I'm gonna take one of the uh, patterns that Vicki so graciously has shared with us for free, and I'm going to do that one of those particular ones together with you. So if you're new to foundation paper piecing, I got you next week. We'll talk about some other personalizations that you could do. Um, we're gonna have more fun with this so please stay tuned next week is the title is basically personalization okay i also want to mention that i will be live today at 3 p.m eastern standard time on my facebook page the business one not inside the group that is private but on my facebook business page and that's to answer any questions that you may have i also might add a lot of times i add things if i felt like there was something more i could talk about something that i felt wasn't necessarily clear um maybe another idea has has sparked uh you know somewhere up here so i will go into that at these things but I'm definitely there for you live to answer any questions that you may have for you 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on my Facebook business page link down below and speaking of links Vicki has so graciously done a blog on these first ty types of steps okay and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the link down below in the description box so that you can click there and go to her blog easily and read some of the things that she has talked about related to this so if you need that reading type material she's got you covered this week so take a gander go visit her blog and my I gotta tell you she's got a lot of really cool stuff on her blog so you might want to have some fun with it after you read what you need to and check her out because she's got some awesome blogs out there. So, giving you the link down below for that. But yeah, guys, I got to get cutting because this is not going to make 
three shelves, 36 inches long. So I've got a lot more strips to cut. I've got a lot more fabric to play with. And um, yeah, I'll see you next week. And until next time, may you continue to be inspired, productive, and joyful, and never stop making your dreams in quilting come true. I love y'all. Happy bookshelf making. See you next week.